850 FTL. Now, back to the afternoon drive. Here's Rich Stevens. This is really exciting for me. America's Got Talent is kicking off season nine with auditions right here in Miami this weekend. Now, obviously, lots of people are going to show up from all over South Florida. And people are going to fly into Miami from all over the country. Let's not kid ourselves. Just for a chance to get 90 seconds in front of the producers for a shot at a million-dollar first prize. The executive producer of America's Got Talent is Jason Raff, and he joins us today on the show. How are you, Jason? I'm great, Rich. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule to no, join us bad. today. We're about to kick this thing off uh, in Miami, so can, can you, can't wait. Can you believe that season nine already? I cannot. I've been doing it actually since season one, and I cannot. I cannot believe we're in nine season. It's crazy. Did you think it would be so successful? No, no. I remember when I was up for this job. I was up for two jobs. It was a celebrity cooking show, and America's Got Talent. I thought, I don't know, America's Got Talent. That seems kind of goofy and fun, and it was supposed to be six episodes and and I was like I'll just try it it'll never last more than a season and then who who, who would have thought it would have changed my life like this it's, it's just really amazing <laughs> and I'd be traveling around the country looking at people do you know show me whatever they think is their talent well, you know, obviously you don't have enough time to show all the stuff on on the show because there's, you know, a limited amount of time but what's the weirdest audition you saw that did not make it on television the weirdest audition that I saw that did not make it on television was probably a guy who came to my audition room, and it was actually in the Los Angeles Convention Center. And um, he he came in, and he, he, he was acting a little odd, and he came in, and he, um, he took off his clothes <laughs> and stripped down to a Speedo. And then he took peanut butter and started smearing it all over his body. And that was, that was his talent. That's, and, then, and then he was like, that's it. And I was like, okay, thank you. Uh, do you have a plan now on what to do with all the peanut butter that's all over the dance floor now? So there was no, no plan to, to even show a, a uh, no, portrait you know, of that, right? And I think I mean, there's no plan to show him because he was trying to be kind of goofy and funny. And and I, I don't know. It just it, it didn't seem like. It didn't seem like it just seemed like he was trying to get on TV, and that's not where we're trying to find. But there's a lot of people, you know, as the seasons go from season, you know, up to season eight last year, uh, you notice, or at least we notice, a lot more people just trying to do stuff to get on TV. Yeah, and I get that. Listen, but there's a point of being entertaining. You know, there's a point of being funny or just being goofy to try to get on TV and trying to be entertaining. We have a lot of weird acts. Like, I encourage people, like, I'll, I'll sing I'll, in Miami. I'll see singers and I'll see dancers and magicians, and I'll, I love it. But I'm just as happy to see people who can do something really weird with one of their body parts. Like, <laughs> I don't really, if it's entertaining. Well, you have to go I to the nightclubs for, for that. <laughs> yeah. I, well, we find, them anywhere, we find them anywhere and everywhere. Like, I love seeing people who've never tried to audition for anything in their life before who come out or their wife drags them out there um, they've heard them sing and then and, and I, I just love it I love seeing professionals so it is a surprise like if someone comes to my room and does something that I've never seen before I'm all for it like the worst thing is when they come to the room and they're just kind of mediocre like that is the worst thing ever all right I want to run one by you okay Sure. Because we started talking about this, and uh, the first phone call that we got was from a woman who has a nine-year-old girl that crochets bathing suits for her doll <laughs> and claims that she can do it in 90 seconds. Well, that, that's not bad. I mean, I've seen, you know, you'd think like, oh, that's so surprising. I've only seen three people do that so far in the nine years. But no, no, I haven't seen that. I have seen people come to my room who do updo hairstyles in 90 seconds, you know. Um, so I don't know. That one's pretty good. I like that. I, so, I would so do that for 90 seconds. You would. Okay. Well, we're going to set that person up then for you. Okay. I'm going to give them an appointment. You okay. give me the name and they won't have to wait online. That's great. Okay. Now, let me ask you a couple other things. First of all, people don't realize that 90 seconds, while it's very fast, it can be years for somebody, too. Well, and the thing is, this is the other thing people do wrong. You want to know what everyone does wrong? Uh, I decided to just spill it now because I'm tired of seeing bad auditions. So I decided, <laughs> you know what, if I'm going to you know, talk to on the radio, I might as well just spill all the beans on it all. You know, I, I think people, you know, pick the be if you're going to sing, Pick the best part of the song, you know. If you can do 90 seconds, don't, if it's a slow beginning, don't start with a really slow beginning and it ends in the middle. You end, like, right before the big notes. You know, pick the good part of the song. I'd rather you do a verse and a chorus that is killer 
than give me the boring intro uh, of a song. You know, don't shy away from from that, and don't you know, don't come to my room or any of my producers' rooms like with your head down, like, hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm I'm okay. I, like I understand you're nervous, but just pretend you're you want to be a star. Like show a little star quality. A little personality. So somebody that sings, do they get to bring music with them, a CD or something? Um, we usually do acapella. For, unless you sing and dance at the same time and you need music, we'll, we'll usually do just acapella is the rule. Um, if you're a dancer, then you can bring a CD. Um, but we'd rather hear your your, your pure voice uh, as opposed to hear you with a, with a track. You know, they always ask, to, you know, do we get a microphone and stuff like that? But these are pretty small rooms in the, in the, in the convention space, so you don't really need it. You're going to be pretty... You're going to be singing pretty close to, you know, to us. Um, and, yeah, a cappella is usually the rule for singers. So what's it like working with Simon Cowell? Well, we don't thank you. Thankfully, that sounded wrong. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, he's, he's, he's usually an X-Factor, so we don't see him much. No, I mean, Simon, listen, he created the show. He created the show, you know, nine years ago. Um, he came up with a way to do the variety format, which was a staple in American television from, you know, in the 60s. You know, the variety format's been around for yeah. 50, 51 years now, actually. Um, and he made it in a way that was this, this new style of TV, which is the competition style. But what I love is that it does give a, you know, back in the day, for those older listeners, you know, when you had the Merv Griffin show and these other shows, you got to see magicians on TV, and you got to see a great juggler and, and a unique dance acts, and just things that were Americana and unique, and Tiny Tim, you know, you got to see. And nowadays, you, you know, you see it on YouTube, or if it's on TV and you're a magician, chances are it's Fox doing some special about how the tricks work with a mass magician. <laughs> like, it, it's just, so I love that this gives people an opportunity to be on TV and be seen by millions of people. So, Jason, what's your background? I, I, are you a performer or, or a dancer am, or singer I, or something? Uh, well, no. I, I have, it's funny. Like when um, I was telling you, like when I started on this show, I was thinking about doing it. I did have an act when I was young, uh, which involved riding a unicycle um, and jumping <laughs> over an egg, which I thought was a huge world record, but, <laughs> which my staff still makes fun of me every time um, you know I, I hear about it. So I quickly let my dreams of comedy and being a stand-up go aside. And then decided to become a, a journalist instead for a while, and, and then and then this show came along, and I was like, well, this seems perfect for so, my unicycling comic <laughs> background. <laughs> so, what exactly are you looking for when you're casting an act for America's Got Talent? You know, that's the best part is I don't know. I, I just know that we're open to any age and any talent. It doesn't matter if you're a professional, if you've never auditioned for anything. We're really nice. We're the nicest competition show. We, I always hear this from people who audition. Like, oh, my God, you guys were so nice. I can't believe I came out. I wasn't sure. I thought you'd be mean. Um, I look for... I look for, like, I want to be surprised. Like, I want you to come in a room, and I want to get goosebumps. You know, that is the best feeling. When I look at the winners and the people who made it far in the competition, I remember when they came in the room, and they they did something that surprised me. The same way that maybe you felt when you watched Susan Boyle on YouTube or, or Jackie Ivanko, who was a young singer. Like, you, there's just that element of surprise and an element of, oh, my God, someone just entered my room that is going to be a star one day. I can't believe I got to see this, you know, in a convention space, you know, in Miami. Like, it is the best <laughs> feeling in the world, knowing that in weeks they could be seen by the judges, in months they could be performing live at Radio City Music Hall in front of millions of people. It is the best part of this job. Yeah, and here in South Florida, you're going to see some of the best people that you'll see anywhere else in the country. There's no doubt about that. Is there an advantage for people to audition online as opposed to an open call in person with you guys? <laughs> Listen, if you can't, I prefer people come to an open call. It doesn't mean you have a better shot. It's just I like to meet people. I like to see your personality. I like to ask you questions um, about who you are and where you got this talent. So we like to meet people. That said, we understand that when it's a big country, not everyone lives in you know Miami, uh, or they already booked that they're away this weekend and uh, and they're not going to cancel their plans. So I would rather see the talent on video. We get thousands of videos. We watch every single one of them. And sometimes it's an act that we can't see in person. Like if you're going to, you know, blow fire or do something kind of <laughs> dangerous or crazy or that involves rigging and an aerial act, you have to show us on tape. You can't do that in the Miami 
Beach Convention Center. So um, I just want to, we just want to see the acts. We want to, if you think you should be on the show, just send it to us. People ask me, do you watch everything? And the answer is, of, of course we do. Like my whole job, our whole job is, God forbid we don't watch someone who's, you know, who's amazing. <laughs> like, and they get, they end up on some other show or something. Like we watch every single thing. We are always looking for talent. Well, that's good. I found this girl in Publix. Do you know what Publix is? Yeah, I know the grocery store. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're sending her to the front of the line to audition for you. Her name is Monica Diaz. Okay. And, and I told her that she should wear her Publix uniform because... She's Absolutely. coming from work. Don't you think that's that's a, a good thing to do? Absolutely. Better wear like a public uniform than just come in in a t-shirt and jeans. Like I'd rather you like again. It goes down to making you know stand out from a crowd. There's gonna be a lot of people there. I don't care if you want to wear a suit or you want to wear all pink uh, or wear a speedo. I don't really care. <laughs> just stand out from everyone else. Show us why you are special. Do not be mediocre. Yeah, you know? I th see, I think that's special because she'll be coming from work. Why not wear exactly. the uniform? Publix is Florida's store. It makes sense. She wanted to get all dressed up. I said, then you're going to look like everybody else. You are You are a good producer, my friend. Can, can you bring me on board? I will. You come out there. You come sit with me. I could use you. I, you know what? I will do that. If, if you're serious, I will come down on Saturday. I would love to go through some of the auditions with you, and then we could talk about it on Monday. Absolutely. Is that, you is, have an invitation. All right. Well, Jason, we're going to do that then. I will come down on Saturday. We're talking to Jason Raff. He's the executive producer of America's Got Talent. And actually, that's a better idea because, you know, i got to be honest with you. What we were going to do, Ron is a musician. And we were going to send Ron down, and then we figured Elliot, who's the producer of the show, he would play the tambourine and I'd play the triangle just to see if we could get a shot of getting in one of your promos or something. But, you know, sitting next to you, I think, sounds a lot better. Well, now you're, you've already left your two buddies there? Like, uh, you know, you've already the, the group has already been disbanded yeah. you know, before you even started. Well, he kicked us to the curb in favor of a ride-along. <laughs> you could have been the Beatles, maybe. Now yeah. you ruined it. Right. Yeah, well, well, that's, you know, he's he's pulling the Yoko on us. Well, the only problem is Ron's got the talent. Elliot and I were just going to stand there just, you know, for the hell of it. Right. Because well, they, well, listen, Ron, I, you know, like I said, we're going to Florida to see talent. If you, <laughs> we would love to see you. And, uh, and uh, you, after the crocheting, uh, uh, you know, I'm good to go. It'll be a tough act to follow. <laughs> okay. That's maybe you should go first. You're right. Good point. <laughs> Jason Raff, America's Got Talent, Season 9, kicking off right here in South Florida this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. It's an open audition, so you can go and try, just wait in line and try out whatever your talent is. You don't have to be a singer. It could be anything that's unusual or something that you've got polished, and, and then you get uh, a shot at a million-dollar prize. I mean, come at least get the autograph of Ron or of this one who's crocheting uh, <laughs> bikinis because they might be the next star. You knew or when. <laughs> you just you just never know. All right, Jason, I'm going to take you up on your offer. Absolutely. So I, I guess i got to get in touch with your people to get in touch with my people, right? Absolutely. I'll, right. I will, I'll take care of you. All right, we'll do it. Thank you so much and look forward to seeing you this weekend. Okay, thanks. Have a good one. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. That's Jason Raff. He's the executive producer of America's Gun Talent. Nice guy. Very passionate. Yeah. so It's nice to hear. So I get to go down and, and sit with him this weekend. Are you guys still going to try out? Yeah, man. You sure, do why it? not? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'm sure I'll uh, make my way down there at some point. Yeah. So, well, we got to go together. Because well, you've already split up the group. What's well, no, this no, no, together no. crap? Well, but, but here's what I'm thinking. If I'm sitting with him, he's going to obviously look to me for my opinion. Right. And you guys can be the group that comes up. And he doesn't have to know that you're those people. But I'll oh, know true. it. Wow. See, that's you're not true. thinking. You give me a chance to concoct the idea. It was no. Simon and Garfunkel, not Simon Garfunkel and Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know. Uh, but it, it's it's really a great opportunity. And by the way, uh, the front of the line passes. I still have some of those. We're going to give one to Simone to bring her kids this week, and we got to do it. He says he wants to see the crocheting act. It's got to be so ridiculous. <laughs> so you know what? <laughs> she has sent me, I think, thirty pictures already of all these different outfits that, that her daughter has uh, crocheted. So, so her daughter's frantically crocheting these things and her mother's <laughs> photographing them. Yeah, Give me more, make me more. And she sent a video of her son. I didn't even bring up her son, but the son should go with the daughter Same and just play, no, play well, sure. a little guitar. You never okay. know. You never know. As, as he said, you just never know. What so an act. If you want to get in on this and you have some kind of talent, shoot me an email at rich, R-I-C-H, at 850WFTL.com and send me uh, either a link to your talent or you can text me at 305-707-7878, 305-707-7878, and uh, we'll pick a few more 
and set you up. You don't have to wait in that line of like 80,000 people. You go right to the front of the line. You get a guaranteed audition. And now that you know I'm going to be sitting next to the executive producer, <laughs> you got a better shot, maybe. maybe. We'll find now, out. Back to All the right, you're listening drive. to the Afternoon Here's Drive with Rich Stevens on 850.